Mike Davis joins us now from the Article 3 Project. Mike, I, I appreciate you coming on. As far as I know, I think this is probably your, your initial interview after this just absolute um, sparks flying courtroom appearance of Hunter Biden. What do you make of what happened in that courtroom today, Mike? It's extraordinary. It's unusual for a plea agreement between the federal government and the defendant to get rejected by a federal judge. But this was an extraordinary plea agreement. It was a sweetheart deal to protect President Biden and to bury uh, evidence of many, many, many crimes. And the government and the uh, and Hunter Biden seem to have had a wink, wink, nod, nod agreement that they weren't going to include a plea waiver in the plea agreement, but they were effectively going to have a plea waiver where the Biden Justice Department wasn't going to pursue Hunter Biden for other charges. And I think the judge saw this as uh, what it was, which was a scam, and she told them to try uh, try again. So basically what you're saying is that there was there were almost two layers to this deal. One layer was uh, the surface level saying, OK, we're you know, you're going to be guilty, some tax charges. But also there was a second layer, an unwritten deal, a handshake deal, a, you know, behind closed doors kind of deal where it's OK, we're also not going to prosecute you for all these other crimes that we have very good evidence of. And oh, by the way, uh, IRS whistleblowers are coming out day after day after day, hammering it out in public, which, you know, we, we pretend as if judges don't watch the news and they're not seeing anything. But of course, this judge seen the IRS whistleblowers. And I have to believe and, and you would know better than me, but I have to believe that that whistleblower testimony played a huge role in this decision because that judge knows there's more to this than is actually in that agreement and that's where she smelled something amiss mike davis yeah she knows this judge knows that this plea agreement is a scam uh, maybe what the biden justice department and hunter biden are trying to do is, is they don't want to include that there's a plea waiver uh for all crimes in this plea agreement because it would a politically be so bad but b it would allow the Biden Justice Department to keep saying to Congress, we can't talk about this because there's an ongoing investigation. So it, it would have the effect of giving uh, Hunter Biden blanket immunity without saying that he's getting blanket immunity so the Biden Justice Department can keep covering up and protecting for him and more importantly for his father, President Biden, for the rest of his term. Right. So at the same time, you've got essentially these IRS whistleblowers, they gave the public leverage both politically and now we're seeing in the judicial side because it's it's different on the judicial side, right? You don't have the same kind of leverage that a legislator or an executive would have, a president or a governor. But that doesn't mean that this stuff doesn't affect their decisions. And so when people are talking about oh, what's the importance of the IRS whistleblowers, we already know this is done. We know this is a done deal. I have to say, I have to imagine that there are things going on behind the scenes. There are phones being picked up the way they're probably being ring, rung off the hook right now in the White House, in the Oval Office, because you've got Karine Jean-Pierre up there right now. She's losing it, saying, look, look, Mike, let, let's walk through for us. What was supposed to happen today? What did the White House want to happen today in this courthouse? And compare that to what actually did happen. What was supposed to happen is you have this David Weiss coming to this sweetheart deal. David Weiss, they say, was, uh, was a Trump U.S. attorney. He was actually handpicked uh, by both Delaware uh, home state senators. I was the chief counsel for nominations on the Senate Judiciary Committee when he was handpicked by both Democrat home state senators. It's how the process works. And David Weiss uh, came to this sweetheart deal with Hunter where he was going to plead guilty to two misdemeanors for failing to pay taxes and he was going to get a deferred sentence a deferred judgment on a felony gun charge but it was all going to go away with no jail time and in effect this was going to bury all of hunter biden's and all of joe biden's and all of jim biden's crimes where the the biden justice department wasn't going to pursue them anymore they didn't want to put that there was a broad waiver plea waiver in this plea agreement because as we discussed it would be it wouldn't be uh, sit politically well it also it doesn't give the the not having it in there gives the justice department the the cover to say that there are ongoing investigations when everyone knows they're not investigating anything anymore and this 
this plea, this sweetheart plea deal just blew up today because the judge knows that it's bogus. Well, let me ask you about that as well, because I said in my assessment that I don't actually buy that there's ongoing investigations, right? There's investigation that's ongoing in the sense that, okay, there's something open and it's on file, but do you actually believe that there's a grand jury, that people are looking at evidence, that there's a serious investigation into Hunter Biden and his business dealings with the CCP and Ukrainian oligarchs? Absolutely not. I think there is an ongoing cover-up by the Biden Justice yes. Department to protect President Biden, there is not an ongoing investigation. I, I think that's exactly right. I couldn't agree with you more because, again, uh, they know that they have to say that because they're, they're under oath and this puts them in the situation. They weren't supposed to have to answer any questions about this today. It was supposed to be pro forma. When it comes down to, so Mike, and, and we've got a couple minutes in this segment, we'll hold you over. Where does this go from now? Do they come back? Do they, do, do they have another bite at the apple? Or do you think this is done for good? No, I think they're going to try to come up with another way, another reason to come to a plea agreement. It may not happen immediately. They may want to just keep this dead investigation open to make it look like they're investigating so they can protect President Biden and his family. But there's no chance that the Biden Justice Department is going to prosecute Hunter Biden for anything <laughs> serious here. They're not going to pursue different charges. They're just going to drag this out as long as they can. Yeah, I think this is exactly right, folks. We've got a break coming up here in a minute. We're on with Mike Davis. He's got the sources that we need within the Department of Justice, within the legal community in Washington, D.C., and over at, and Delaware, elsewhere, to understand what's actually going on behind the scenes. Look, everything I'm hearing right now, that at the White House, they are absolutely losing it. Um, also, we do have a little bit of breaking news. I don't have the video clip of this yet. Um, apparently, Mitch McConnell, Senator McConnell, has had a, a medical episode. Uh, we know he was being treated for concussion um, recently, but... Uh, he was escorted away from a podium, and so we're going to keep an eye on that over the break. We're going to see what happened there. Uh, hopefully, uh, everything is good for Senator McConnell, and this was just a uh, uh, just a, a bad moment. But our thoughts and prayers are with Senator McConnell because apparently he was escorted away with a, a medical situation just moments ago. I'm clicking through here. Was this in the Senate? This was in the Senate where this happened. Yeah, so this was in the Senate. He was on camera. He was actually at the podium, uh, and he had to be escorted away. We're going to see uh, Producer Fies. Let's see if we can get that that uh, video clip up for the next segment for everybody because I want to be able to show what happened so that people have got – suddenly my phone just blew up. Everybody sending me this thing about what happened there. Folks, always a lot going on, a lot of sparks flying over at the White House today, though. Absolute panic. Phones ringing off the hook. People are freaking out because the Hunter Biden situation ain't going away.
I grew up in the hood, I rolled with bloods. And then boys had a saying. You can't be listening to all that slappy whack, trim out his outlets a bam ship, nippy bam bam, like human events with Jack Posobiec. All right, Jack Posobiec back here, Washington, D.C., Human Events, live. We're on with Mike Davis. Uh, one thing that was interesting, Mike, so we, we've talked to you about these these Georgia cases, the potential felony charges, Jan 6, et cetera. I think you were ahead of everybody talking about the 14th Amendment, the disqualification clause. I saw an interesting piece, though, in The Atlantic this morning, and this is by Paul Rosenzweig, and he wrote... The 2024 election could be the end of the cases against Donald Trump. The most powerful office in the nation presents his best chance to terminate the cases against him. Why are they writing a headline like that now? And from a legal perspective, what are they talking about, Mike? Well, if President Trump wins back the White House, uh, he can order his Justice Department to dismiss his cases with prejudice, which he should do. And if uh, for some reason the Biden Justice Department manages to win a conviction uh, before President Trump wins back the White House, he should pardon himself. This is clearly lawfare by Democrats on many different fronts with Alvin Bragg with his bogus charges against President uh, Trump in New York for the non-crime of settling a nuisance claim. Jack Smith's bogus charges against Trump for the non-crime of a former president having his presidential records, which is allowed under the Presidential Records Act. And then Jack Smith and Fulton County DA, Democrat DA Fannie Willis's bogus charges for the non-crime of a president objecting to a presidential election, which is allowed by the Electoral Count Act of 1887 and the First Amendment. The Democrats know that they, these are uh, bogus charges against Trump. Jack Smith doesn't care that they're, they're bogus charges. He's the guy who brought bogus charges against Virginia Governor Bob McDonnell before uh, the uh, 2016 presidential election when Governor McDonnell was a likely Republican presidential uh, candidate. And Bob, Mc, uh, Bob McDonnell ended up having Jack Smith's conviction overturned eight to nothing in the U.S. Supreme Court, but it was seven, several years later after the damage was done, after Smith took out Bob McDonnell as a presidential candidate. That's the same play that they're running now. They don't care if Trump ultimately prevails on appeal in the Supreme Court, which he will. They just care about trying to eliminate him as a presidential candidate in 2024. And frankly, Jack, as we're seeing with the polls, this is backfiring on the Democrats. This Alvin Bragg's indictment won President Trump the nomination, and I think Jack Smith's indictments are going to win President Trump the White House. And how do you see this playing out? And I, I asked Rich Barris this from a from a perspective of independence, because I think it really is independence as well as MAGA turnout that is if Trump and it exceeding increasingly looks as though he is going to be the nominee. Um, it's really that question of independence. Will he be able to pick up more of these voters? Uh, how do you feel that independents or folks that you talk to that maybe aren't exactly uh, full-throated Trump supporters, that they look at this situation and then, of course, juxtapose it with, uh, you know, they, they're going after Trump on process crimes. Then you've got Joe Biden's son at the same time, you know, is getting away with everything up to Everything up to murder. We don't know that if, we don't know if murder is part of this yet, but let's say everything up to murder at this point. Well, I mean, and it's not just President Biden's son; it's President Biden himself who's getting away with foreign yes, bribery. Yes, right, exactly. I mean, and it's. I mean, I think the American people are starting to see very clearly that our justice system at every level, the federal government, state government, local governments, have been politicized and weaponized by Democrats against Trump, Trump's top aides, Trump supporters, uh, even, you know, they're going after people who aren't exactly Trumpy. I mean, we have people threatening to kill Supreme Court justices, and they're not just going after the conservative Supreme Court justices, they're going after Chief Justice John Roberts and his wife. So I think people are waking up pretty quickly to the fact that this is a, uh, a deranged Democrat party, not our parents or grandparents Democrat party anymore, not liberals who love America, leftists who hate America and are trying to destroy America, and this is not sitting well. We can't have two systems of justice in America. And you, you take that, and you also take the fact that Biden is uh, uh, is r running our country into the ground. We have interest rates now at the highest level 
in 20 years because of Biden's out of control spending. That hurts American families. They can't afford home mortgages anymore. The interest rates are too high. This is having an effect. And I think a lot of these independents are going to say, you know what, maybe Trump, Trump is a jerk. But, uh, you know, he actually was a good president who delivered peace and prosperity in this country instead of war and chaos that Biden has delivered. Yeah, gas was under two dollars. We weren't we weren't in war with, uh, you know, this proxy war with Russia. We weren't escalating tensions with China. I do think that. When you look at a lot of these things that just just on the basis and and it's also one of those deals where when you when you take time away from the media telling you every day that you know, Trump is bad, Trump is bad, Trump is bad. When when that steady drumbeat goes away for a while and you just look at this country as it is and as it's been, it starts to kind of uh, peel off those those what's the opposite of rose colored glasses right you know those toxin colored glasses and put it on mike davis where can people go to follow you get more access to your work and thank you for your time today appreciate it very much jackie you can donate at article 3 project.org article number 3 project.org at article 3 project at article number 3 project on getter twitter truth and my personal is at mrd dmia at mrd dmia and thank you jack a fantastic follow 